Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Today we're going to be talking about your garden in the month of October. So we're going to be talking about what vegetables you can plant, what tropicals you can get started, and of course what are the key natives that will be in bloom, plus tips to help you have a successful Florida garden in October. And as always, I'll be using my handy dandy Wild Floridian Garden Planner to help me along with this discussion. So let's talk vegetables for the month of October. When it comes to October and seed starting, we are definitely doing cold weather crops. This would be all of your brassicas, your broccolis, your cauliflowers, your Brussels sprouts, your kales, who else? Oh, cabbage. <laughs> These are plants that can handle a little bit of heat, but honestly are gonna prefer that cooler weather here in Florida. And getting those seeds started now is gonna be really helpful so that you can get really large abundant crops, especially with things like kale and broccoli that you can harvest and come again, harvest and come again. This will help you maximize your season. Also, when it comes to the month of October and starting seeds, think about things that have bulbs and roots, things like carrots and onions, radishes and beets. All of those would be great to start this time of year too. So that brings us to our first tip. Do you start it in ground in your bed or do you put it in a pot and then later transplant it? Now, when it comes to all those brassicas, yes, you can start them in ground or you could start them in containers. And this may be a good idea because it hasn't gotten really cold yet though it has dropped like five six degrees so yay but we still have a lot of butterfly activity and we know things like the cabbage moth which is one of the major pests for all brassicas from kale to brussels sprouts to cabbage and cauliflower it's actually a type of white butterfly it can be anything from our southern white butterfly to our checkered white butterfly it's actually their caterpillars are what are often considered cabbage moths and that will eat your plants. So the risk is, is if you start it in ground, it just takes one little tiny hungry caterpillar to eat it and it goes kaput. So you have a couple options. You could start it in a small container and then later, once it's a little bit more substantial, move it out into your garden or you can put it in your beds and then just be prepared with either a shade cloth or a bug cloth just to give it a little bit of protection while it gets itself established. This is a really common practice for us butterfly gardeners is that even with plants that we want caterpillars on when they're itty bitty babies and we know the butterflies are in the area we protect them to make sure they get established so that way we can make sure that plant gets nice and strong so that the butterfly has lots and lots of food later on but when it comes to our vegetables we want to make sure that plant has a good establishment so we can get food for us and not so much for the butterfly. Now this practice doesn't have to be continued through the whole winter because once we start dropping below 60 degrees a lot of butterfly species go dormant or they migrate out of the area. Now those plants that you need to start in bed things like the carrots and radishes and beets and onions well I guess onions you don't have to but like they're so like when they're tiny it's just easier just start them in the bed. Now when it comes to pest activity for your radishes your beets and your onions it's not going to be as big of a deal, but when it comes to your carrots, this can be a host plant for our black swallowtails. And so similar to your brassicas, you may want to be prepared to give them just a little bit of protection. But here's the good thing. Most packets of carrot seeds come with tons of carrot seeds and carrots start really quickly. So if you lose some to some hungry little caterpillars, you can just restart it right away. I'm going to be using short and sweet carrots. I've harvested lots of my seed heads, so I am ready to go start putting those in my backyard beds. And if you've been wondering, hey, what varieties are you planting, Jacqueline, this fall, winter, and spring? Well, go check out this video right here. I go through all the varieties and where you can pick up those seed packets too so that you can grow just like me. Now, when it comes to other vegetables that you could be growing, it's time for lettuces. So for those of you who have been waiting to get those salad gardens going, you've already gotten your tomatoes and your peppers, maybe some cucumbers going, but you've been waiting to get lettuces going. Now is the time that you can start getting these lettuces going. So when it comes to lettuce varieties, I'm a big fan of things like butter crunch and romaine, and there's tons and tons of sub varieties. But the biggest thing that I find to be the most helpful in Florida, especially because we have so many bugs, is to go get loose leaf lettuce, AKA you can cut it and come again. So that right now when we still have some bugs, if it gets a little funky for a minute, you can just cut it off and the plant's gonna keep going and going and going through the winter time. So you're gonna have tons and tons of lettuce for all that salad that you wanna eat. Those who wanted to start something and maybe are feeling like you're so beginner and you're just feeling overwhelmed by seeds, this is a great time of year to do bunching onions, AKA scallions, AKA green onions. And these you can also, besides starting them from seed or from buying starts online, what you can also do is you can just go to the store, go buy some green onions from the produce area, go use your green onions, and then take those bottoms and put them in the ground. <laughs> it is now cool enough that this technique will work and they will provide you green onions over and over and over again. I've had some of mine live six to nine months 
without really any work. If you want to learn more about how to start green onions from green onion scraps, I will link this video at the end so that you can learn more. Another thing that you want to keep in mind when it comes to vegetables is that this is one of the transition months and one of the very few months that you can grow classic spinach and strawberries. But strawberries aren't a vegetable, they're a fruit. Yes, I, I know, but we always put it on the vegetable list probably because they're more like an annual crop. <laughs> Let's take a second to talk about strawberries. So this is one of the very few months that you're supposed to be able to plant strawberries, though we're gonna have a slightly warmer than usual fall. So you should be able to, if you get your plants a little bit late, don't worry if you have to push into the early parts of November. My recommendation when it comes to strawberries is go ahead and put them in like five gallon containers or one of those green stocks. That way you can move them around and protect them if you have a little bit of a late start. I know so many of you are going to be just wondering, but what variety should I get? Now I have tested three different varieties in my garden and all three have produced strawberries, but one stood out above the others. Now I know one of the most popular types of strawberries to grow in Florida is the Chandler variety and it's it okay here and if you're looking to get some Chandler variety you can pick them up from places like Amazon I will put a link down below but another variety I did that has actually lived way over a year and it did better than I actually thought it was was Queen Alt variety this one you can often pick up at Home Depot and Lowe's that's the strawberry variety that they sell there and there are still Home Depots and Lowe's that are selling those right now but the hands-down variety that was like just putting out strawberries and putting out nice juicy size ones was Albion. The way that I found out about this variety was actually through one of you, Connie. Our friendly neighbor Connie actually sent me some of these last year so that I could try them out and I was able to go and plant them in this video right here. And these by far and away were the best producing strawberry variety that I grew in my garden. Now you may be wondering, how do we get in contact with Connie? Should we all bother her? No, 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 no. You can actually pick up this variety also from Amazon and I will link it down below. But I just want to give a big thank you for Connie for getting me onto this variety because it just worked so well. Outside of these three varieties, there are many other types of varieties that work really well. And some of the best ways that you can find some of the strawberry varieties that will work in your garden is working with some of your local nurseries, especially if you live in the central Florida area. There are tons of nurseries all around Plant City where they grow most of the strawberries in Florida. But for those who have already had great success with strawberries that they picked up from their local nurseries, go ahead and let the community know down below. What's the name of the nursery? What variety did you pick? Go ahead and put a link to their website and of course let us know what area you're in so that those of us who are in the area can go ahead and pick up some of the great varieties and have some great strawberry success this year. Now just a couple other things to be thinking about when it comes to vegetables in the month of October is what we're officially, officially in fall now, technically started at the end of September, as a few of you like to point out, and my husband who actually came from a place where the leaves fall. So those of you who have been working on your warm weather crops and have been doing seedlings, you should be about the time ready to go and transplant those out into your garden. So your tomatoes, your peppers, those should be starting to get ready to go put out into the garden. But do make sure that you harden them off if you've been keeping them in pretty covered areas before you just shove those little baby plants out there. Now, due to the hot, oceans and hot water that we've had this year. South Florida, if you are feeling like I still haven't gotten my tomatoes ready, um, can I still go? Yes, because we have a warm fall coming ahead. And so warm crops can still be started. So tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, some of your squashes, you can still get those going. And even those who live in like my nine B's in central Florida, feel free to kind of push it this year because we do have really warm waters. But do be careful and be prepared to protect your plants because while we're gonna have a warmer than normal fall, what we will most likely have is a cooler than normal winter. I've been looking at a lot of the meteorological reports and studies for this coming winter and they're calling out that it might get a little bit cooler than we typically get in the December, January, February. And why that's important is that if you are starting your plants a little bit late, when they're starting to produce their tomato fruits and pepper fruits, they might be a little bit at risk because the temperature may drop. But just be prepared to have cloths and covers to warm them up. Things to just think about as we get ahead but don't let the fact that you might be running a little bit behind get you down. Now, when it comes to our tropical edible plants like papayas and bananas and so many others, if you live in Central and North Florida, there's not much that you can be doing at this point. It's really, we're just run out of time before it's gonna get potentially too cold for these plants. If you live in North Florida, Central Florida, really what you could do is you could do some sugar cane because it's a type of grass, or you could do pineapples. But beyond that, and maybe something like a Malabar spinach, you're honestly just like leave it for right now. But if you live like in South, South Florida, like my Miami Day people, my Key West people, and you really wanna push the limit, you can try. Because we will have a warmer fall, 
as long as you water as we head into these drought months because we've had a lot less rain and try to get it really well established and then be prepared for some cold protection down there might be able to get some of these tropical plants to get going so if you're feeling a little adventurous you're feeling a little bit wild go right on ahead just remember when it comes to tropical plants especially things like bananas and papayas they are big water suckers and they like heat and they really really start to become big babies once we get below 70 degrees which we're starting to hit some lows that are getting in the low 70s. So just something to think about if you are thinking about establishing tropical. So as we hit the month of October, we're about to turn the corner on seeing a ton of our native wildflowers go into bloom. Things from like goldenrod to liatrices to the horsemen, plus mooly grasses. We've got the opportunity to have so much native beauty happening at this time of year. My garden, one of my favorite areas right now has been this area because it's a combination of dotted horsemen and blue curls. The white to pale pink, plus the vibrant bluish purple from the blue curls is just such a pretty combo that one, pollinators love. Two, I was getting off a gorgeous minty aromatic. And three, this is just pretty. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't need to be any more than that. It needs to be just pretty. <laughs> For me, I'm having a bunch of plants start to bounce back because we finally removed that Ponciana tree. So we're having things from our privet senna start to bloom to tons of our native porter weed. Also my flamingo pink <laughs> tropical sage plus the sky flower are starting to do awesome. You may also see things like our native swamp pink milkweed starting to go into bloom or set seed depending on the area you live in. And if you're thinking about getting lots and lots of color into your garden, native flowers is gonna be bringing tons of color come October. Now, when it comes to your garden this month, there's a couple other things you need to keep in mind. One, we are heading into our drought season. So we will get rain this month, but we will probably, well, we're, we, we're way out of that time period where we're probably gonna get a lot of rain. So if you turn off your sprinklers over the summer, it may be time to turn them back on. It is something definitely to monitor and you wanna be extra attentive to new plants that you put in, whether they're vegetables, tropicals, or some of your native wildflowers. Another thing to consider this month, while it's not necessarily to benefit anything in particular when it comes to plants in your gardens, one of the things, because we support wildlife here in the Wild Floridian Garden, is to consider turning your lights off in the month of October. In the month of October, a lot of migrating birds are coming to Florida or they're going through Florida to get down to the Caribbean, South America, or even Central America. What most people don't realize is a lot of the migrating happens at night. And birds are trying to use stars and other directional forces to be able to know where to go. We have found over and over again by having on tons of lights that they end up hitting into buildings, flying into houses, and not getting to where they really need to go. If you want to support the birds, go ahead and consider turning your lights off at night so that you can allow all those songbirds, all those water birds, all the gorgeous, gorgeous wildlife to go ahead and head on south. Now, something that's kind of a little bit outside the garden, but if you are on the Facebook groups that look at Florida birds, then you know all up and down the west coast of Florida, we have been having flamingo sightings and it is so exciting. If there's anything good about a hurricane, it's that the fact that Hurricane Adalia kicked some of our classic American flamingos back onto Florida shores. So we have been seeing them all across things like Tampa Bay, over by the Skyway Bridge near me, and up and down the coast all the way very, very far north, way out of their territory. But if you are hitting the beaches, go ahead and keep your eyes open for one of our native flamingos. Flamingos almost went entirely extinct in the state of Florida due to commercial hunting for ladies' hats so that they could be put back in the 1800s when they used to have those big old feathers on them. And since then, we almost entirely lost our population Population, though we did maintain a very, very, very small population down in the Florida Everglades. So we're really excited the fact that the flamingos are a little bit further outside the Everglades and may establish themselves further up the coastline so that, you know, we can all see Florida flamingos again. And one of our final tips is because it's a little bit cooler and it's a little bit drier, it's time if you're considering doing some of the larger projects from arch trellises to raised garden beds, this would be the time to go ahead and do that. All right, and if you wanna go ahead and pick up the beds that I recommend, check out this video right here. If you need an easy vegetable to grow, check out the green onions and how to start them from strawberries, check out this video. And if you wanna know all the varieties that I'm gonna be growing, check out this video right here. Plus there'll be links to some of the things that I mentioned in this video. Okay, I'll see you soon, bye. Bye.